Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Dan Jurgen. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. The Krypton Report podcast is dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl, and the planet Krypton. We discuss movies, TV, game, comics, and all things DC. So join me, Tyler, with my co-host James and Jania. Welcome to the Krypton Report. How's it going, everybody? Welcome. It's me, Tyler, the Superman of Blue. And with me today is my co-host. You know him by many names, but today he goes by that new name, Chimp Arm. Welcome, Chimp Arm. <laughs> Chimp Arm. <laughs> As for all you uh, Peacemaker fans. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I gotta say, I gotta say though that for for the show being what it is, and and honestly, how absolutely ridiculous that opening title sequence is. I've I've watched it. I've watched all three episodes, and I watched the first ep- the first two twice. So I've seen that intro five times, <laughs> and I still laughed my ass off the fifth time. I watched it's- it. Like you said, it's low hanging fruit. It's it's and I said it's James Gunn basically unleashed, doing whatever he wants because it's for an HBO Max show. And if you don't if you don't buy into John Cena, and you didn't buy into like what he was doing in the Suicide Squad, you're not gonna do this. And like, it's a very different side of DC with a character that most people would care less about. And that's why James Gunn's getting away with everything he's doing because none of the characters are, you know, anything you, you care about. Like, it remains – okay, <laughs> the one that kills me is Vigilante because he's just so, like, dark, graphic, and goofy. He's It's Adrian Chase, but he is so – It is <laughs> it is not comic accurate characters, no. Okay. We're just going to throw that out, people, that uh, these are not comic accurate. And you know what? I'm actually going to try to – I tried to do this as my James Gunn rewatch. I'm going to try to watch Super again, the James Gunn movie, um, just for, out of curiosity on some things. But, hey, yes, Peacemaker did drop this week, three episodes. Um, it's a different kind of show. It is funny if you like stupid – Humor, like I said, if you were on board with the Suicide Squad, you'll probably translate well to the show. Um, the pacing's a little slow, but it's a show. Um, I'm in it for yeah. Cena, you know. That's and and Robert Patrick, of course, he's amazing. As uh, yeah, as much as as much as you hate his character, just from the first time you see him, um, fantastic. That's great. Um, and yeah, I mean, the show is. The show is is lowest common denominator um, humor, yeah. like yeah. like it's it's, it's they are not it's, they are not reaching for anything. It's it's um you know like like uh, you said well like you I said um, low hanging fruit. I mean like they don't let a joke fly by. Any any yeah. joke they can do, no matter how crass or or childish, they're doing. They, they're ta- they're taking advantage of. Yeah, and, the, and they'll just keep going with it. You're like, okay, we can move on, but they're just like, we're going to keep talking because we have eight hours to fill. So, <laughs> uh, that happened. Let's see. We got a couple other things that happened this week. Uh, let's see. Superman and Lois return, and that's what we're here to talk about. Um, Naomi premiered, and we'll talk about that in a brief second. But we got a couple of news blips. Um, so we'll start there. First one is Ed Brubaker will serve as head writer on the 10 episode first season of Batman Cape Crusader for the HBO series. That's, that's, that's pretty dope. I mean, uh, Alara uh, sounds like she's excited she's about in. it. Yeah, she's, <laughs> yeah, <in. laughs> she's like, Oh, I'm in. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's great. You know, legendary comic book writer. Yeah, ten episodes. I mean, 
you know, hopefully that uh, we know it's going to be a new show, even though it's produced by Tim. But uh, ten episodes, you know, hopefully they are, are kind of straight to the point, you know. Yeah, and like I know it's supposed to be because the you know the big trend is as we're gearing up for the Batman is everything's back to like early Batman. Um, which sucks because I really want to explore like later Batman, but whatever. Um, so I hope it does. They just don't take too much time get getting going on everything. So we'll we'll see. Um, in other quick news here, McFarlane Toys released their listing of the Shaz- of the Black Adam figures. And check this out, okay? Because this is. In June of 2022, we should be getting the Black Adam Ancient Costume, Black Adam Hero Costume, Adam Smasher, Adam Smasher Mega Figure, Dr. Fate, Cyclone, Hawkman, and then the one here, Sabak Mega Figure. So I found that interesting of, will Sabak be in the film? So... Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I saw a listing of char- of the characters and stuff. No, there's no picture thing that of that yet. I mean, we uh, McFarlane is making a Black Adam endless win. Yes, they, I did get the email today about the endless winner figures, but I expect that to be pretty different than than we're expecting to see from. Uh, Wayne Johnson and and Black Adam. Oh yeah, I, I'm actually really excited to see what they come up with for the Black Adam figures. So, um, and then the the other like big news is they are filming the Batgirl, the Batgirl, <laughs> they are the Batgirl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking at so the Batman released uh, real quick for the Batman. They released the. Um, uh, toys, like some stuff from the toys, like images. Spin Master put up like a little thing about the different toys that will be released on that, and the costumes, like the Halloween costumes. They released what the kids' costumes, the adult costumes, and then like just the T-shirt costume will be for the Batman. They had pictures of that. Um, so me and the kids were looking at those. Yeah, so that's I mean, cool. for speaking for the speaking of Batman, McFarland doing a uh, Bruce Wayne and motorcycle figure. Yeah, that figure <laughs> looks horrible. I am definitely not getting that one. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I just I looked at that. I was like, mm, I'll pass. I was like, right, like, yep. I want Bruce Wayne in a poncho, <laughs> Bruce <laughs> paint on. What was funny? Okay, so <laughs> in the initial release. On on the website from McFarland, it shows on their figures, it shows Riddler, Catwoman, and Batman. But then, like, where the figures are starting to roll out, there's a Penguin one. And the Penguin one looks cool. But then, okay, let's jump over to Spin Master for the actual, like, action figures, like, more kid action figures. And there's Catwoman, two different Batmans, Penguin. And no Riddler. Because Solomon's like, where's the Riddler figure? And I was like, I, I don't know. Almost one, it, it, it almost makes you wonder. I mean, we know what he's going to look like for the most part. Like, if they're, if they're hiding anything at all or later in the movie. Right. So, I, I don't know. It's just interesting. So, all right. So back to Batgirl. They are filming it, and there's a bunch of photos coming out um, of where they're filming outside and stuff. And the first one to talk about is a couple of photos of Leslie Grace with her dyed blonde hair or red hair. Blonde hair. Yeah, and, red hair. And, and it's interesting because they're they're actually pulling off like a redhead look. Yeah, and. It's just like, you know, it's behind the scenes. There was a shot of her 
in like a cloak, meaning that she must have had like the Batgirl costume partially on or something. But she was covered going to set. Right. So I expect some sort of leaked uh, image soon, which is crazy to me that Warner Brothers let all these leaked images go of like Sasha Callie when that when that came out of her as Supergirl and the behind the scenes. But yet they didn't decide to put anything official out to kind of just curve that. Right. Maybe they're trying to hide it a little bit more. Like, like we just don't want the pictures leaked so quickly. <laughs> I know, but th- it just means that you're just letting people fuel their discussions and maybe their hatred towards behind the scenes or stunt suits or, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not actually letting them get a good look at what your character is supposed to look like. So I expect to see the bat suit, you know, soon. I mean, that was our first look of the Batman. If you remember was the stunt performer on the motorcycle. Yeah. In the suit. Uh, it was just a behind the scenes photo. It was the first time we saw the suit and everyone was kind of ripping it apart and break and everything. So, uh, you would think they would get ahead of the game, but it's Warner brothers. We know how they're having problems. Yeah, um, I don't. <laughs> you know, you never really know what they're what they're up to over there with how piss poorly they, they handle um, leaks and um, public relations and everything else. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I'm hoping to see a reveal of the Batgirl suit soon. I want to see what they're want to see what they're working with um and leslie grace is is you know just from some some images i mean i'm enjoying what i'm seeing yeah i mean i i always try to be positive you know that um you know it's one of those things people are posting like not my bad girl or she should have been this actress you know more of the traditional redhead that we all kind of think but we know we're, how they are we're trying to you more about inclusion and diversity and I just I just try to be positive you know what I'm saying and unless I feel like they completely betray the character and do something horrible um, I'll speak out but I just like to be on the positive side yeah I mean it there's nothing really to see yet um, or to really take from it too much I mean they're leaked photos um, she uh, they they have showed shown her her red hair um the one photo i mean she could just be walking off on on the set or something just in some friggin baggy clothes or she could be in between shots and she's playing like an other undercover homeless person you know i mean it, it, i wouldn't put it past what she was wearing in that in that Oh yeah, I'm just for, for yeah. that to be shooting something like that. You know what I mean? Oh, totally, totally. So, so. <clears throat> but it's it's literally nothing. It's just a couple of images of her. And oh, it's snap! Completely behind the scenes, dude. Hold on, hold on. As we're talking, I'm checking okay. my Twitter updates. Uh, I think we have our first costume. It no looks way. Legit. It's yeah, it looks legit. It's from the source that's been putting putting up all the, the leaks, I'm going to send it your way right now. Hold on to your pants. Yeah. All right, I'll live. try. People, live. Jamie's, tr- Jamie's trying to take them, but I'll try. <laughs> Come on, Shimborn. My Barn. pants. <laughs> really? What? Interesting. So it's we definitely... Met. Okay, so we're here we are, breaking news. Um, it's definitely the Burnside style. Absolutely, yeah. The, it looks good. Like the purple um, and gold. Yeah, I mean, it looks good. Which I think I think is really cool, really interesting. I mean, our introduction to Batgirl and, and she did wear a purple suit. Oh, yeah, totally. I love the I mean, purple. I, I, I think the Burnside suit goes back to, um, <clears throat> excuse me. The Burnside suit goes all the way back to the 66 where, where she was um, Batgirl. 
So yeah, that yeah. was shared by Leslie Grace uh, also on Twitter. So yeah, this is this is a, the official reveal of the Batgirl suit. Okay, it's just hilarious that I'm sitting here complaining about why aren't they doing this, and then I just open my Twitter feed, and this was posted not too long ago, about an hour 20, ago. Twenty three minutes from Leslie Grace. Twenty. <laughs> okay. See. Um, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Bat, uh, Batgirl of Burnside. Um, I like, I'm, I kind I like the cowl. Um, for the most part, I can't, you can't see too much of it, but what I really like and what's really standing out is the gold bat symbol. And she's got the yellow on the inside of Kate, which is, it, 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 which is both incredibly comic act. Yeah. I mean, it's and, great, and not, right? and not like this realistic tactical crap that everybody has to make, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's a great way to start off Batgirl. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. I like it. It's awesome. I wonder if the I wonder if leather is the way to go. Kind of looks like old school a little bit, old school superhero costumes, but especially see what means, it looks like in action. Especially for the Burnside style. Yeah. Um, and it also gives you somewhere to go moving forward. Like that could be her costume at the start. And then at the end, she could be having a secondary costume. Like we don't, we don't know the story, you know, like this could be the one that she makes on her own. And then she gets one actually made by Batman. So, Hey, it's pretty cool. We actually got to hear why we were complaining about it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. See it. Really cool. So, C arm, let's move forward. The other big thing from Batgirl, that's never gonna get old, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Just resign my to change my Twitter now, chimp arm. At chimp arm. <laughs> chimp arm red. Uh the other big thing was they released there are like graffiti murals that are gonna be po- that are painted in Gotham. And one is Catwoman from Batman Returns licking her hand. Um, so definitely Michelle Pfeiffer's Batman Returns Catwoman. Another is Batman and Robin. And that's the big thing is like it's a Batman and Robin um, mural, you know? So like graffiti. And it looks good. I mean, you know, we, we can all speculate what the story is, but, you know, one of the things is this is going to take place after The Flash. So maybe whatever happens in The Flash will fall out into Batgirl. Um, so we'll have to wait and see, you know, but it's supposed to be Michael Keaton's Batman. And so it'll be whatever fallout we get. From there. So. I I, I do like that there's a Batman and Robin in the mural. Um, Right. You know, I mean, the one good thing we guess we can say as of as of now, they are embracing some of the comic bookness. I mean, to have a child out there doing what Robin does and then to have the Batgirl of Burnside um, the yellow in her cape and the the gold Mm -hmm. bat symbol I mean that's that's very comic you know they're they're, I think the using color like that not not just like the black and gray armor type stuff you know, I think it's. I think it's good. I think that's the right correct. I mean, you, I mean, you, you know, we are. Uh, we talked about it before. We're already suspending disbelief. When you go to see these movies. You know, like mm-hmm. you ruin that disbelief when you try to explain everything. Yeah, I mean, there, there's two ways to approach it. I mean, we're in a time where we we kind of like the costumes, so that's what we look at. Um, with Robin, you know, I always kind of thought like he's more like 16. Um, I was kind of putting him in that bracket where he's, he's a teenager. He's still a kid, but he's old enough that he's starting, he can make his own decisions in a way. Um, 
And he and his point was he was supposed to be the brightly colored to distract them by Batman beat the crap out of them. Yeah. Um, and uh yeah. I mean I even and and the story wise, you know, story wise when it comes to it, Bruce trained for how many years to become who he is, to be able to do what he does. He's not gonna train a kid for three months and take him out on the streets. It's gonna take quite a while for him to think that a child is ready to do what he does. Mm-hmm. You know, even if he got him at 12, he's not taking him out on the street to tell him 40. <laughs> 40. <laughs> 40. <laughs> right. So that, that pretty much covers the news. Um, I mean, that's all that's really been happening. Uh, like, like I said, I'm not going down rumor mills and stuff like that right now. There's just too much crap. I, I'm, I'm more about Let's chat about solid facts. Um, so I do want to take a moment here and just let everyone know that here, January 23rd, 22nd, I'll be participating online in the multiverse fundraiser presented by Back of the Cereal Box uh, as part of the Perrine Project. If anyone doesn't know, Valerie Perrine, who ha- played Miss Tessmacher in Superman the movie and Superman 2. Uh, has been diagnosed with Parkinson's and they're raising money to help her. I will be running a panel. I will be interviewing the amazing Sarah Douglas, AKA Ursa herself on Sunday, the 23rd at one o'clock Eastern. I'm double checking. Cause all my, all my times here <laughs> are in uh, central. So yes, one o'clock Eastern. And then I'll be doing a few other panels. So just check out our social media and you'll see those. I do also want to say that we have a Patreon. Uh, It's $1 and we're trying to, we'll be doing movie commentaries, but we'll also be doing specials too. Um, Like Brian and I did a special where we just talked about the Matrix Resurrections and the Matrix franchise. And we'll probably be recording another one up here soon about Scream. Um, So that's all we've been dropping our Patreon. It's a dollar a month and you'll get at least four episodes a month of commentaries talking and you never know the voices that are going to pop up on there in the background. Uh, we just recently released two episodes on the main feed here, um, to give people an idea of what it is that we do over on our Patreon. Uh, we have a new patron. I want to thank Mr. Anthony Desiato just joined up from digging for kryptonite. And we want to thank him and all of our other Patreons. Uh, Thank you. You know, I think I think I mentioned Nate. Nate signed up uh, f- from the Superman the Animated podcast. Uh, I, I remember you saying something. Um, I think it was on air, but I think it was positive. too. But if not, just want to make, sure, <laughs> want to make sure I give Nate some love. Cause yeah, it could easily have been when we were chatting off off air. <laughs> we talk way too much not outside but, <laughs> of recording. <laughs> so, uh, you know, me me and the arm here. We got to make sure we we cross it, but. I just wanted to say that up. Check out, keep, keep our social media up to see that. And it'll, it'll be a good time. A lot of cool panels. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited to do mine, but there's some other people that are going to be on there. Um, Sheriff Adams from Smallville will be a panel, as will Sheriff Jody Mills from Supernatural. I, w- I want to get on that one if they'll, if they'll let me. Um, Those sound awesome. Yeah. And so, yeah, just check it out. That's the Multiverse Fundraising, uh, multiversefundraiser.com. And like I said, it's on our social media. So that was that quick little info. Let's get to Superman and Lois, Season 2, Episode 1, What Lies Beneath. Now, James, I'm going to have to say this. I did not get to watch this Tuesday night because I don't have cable. I don't see a point in cable, okay? The only show I want to watch live is this one. Really, any of the CW shows, basically. Um, I had an antenna. The dogs ate the antenna. Uh Uh-huh. So I'll have to go get me a new antenna. So it was very heartbreaking and hard to sit back and, um, you know, just uh, wait for uh, it to drop. So that sucked. <laughs> yeah, um, I can imagine. I um, it was like four minutes before 
oh crap, it's eight. It's almost eight o'clock. So I ran upstairs to the TV where the antennas hooked up, and I had to. Uh, I had I had not even scanned the channels oh. for the TV, so I had to run it channel scan before it came on. That's that happened to me when we went last time. Um, when uh, Superman Lois came back and uh, Stargirl was premiering. I'm sitting there trying to do this, the, the channel scan, but I went ahead, you know, I bought, I'll buy the season, but right now I'm just, uh, until I have the full money to drop, I'm just kind of buy them as individual episodes. So I went ahead and bought it on iTunes and we watched it that way after one thing had already been spoiled because the internet sucks and no one can let anything go or slide without spoiling the crap out of everything. Which part got spoiled? A certain fist. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, we will uh, discuss that. So, but let's start here. I'm curious. I think I, the one at the very end. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, you know what? I haven't done a whole lot of digging, so I'm not sure what I saw. Oh. Um, so we can talk about that. But before we get into Superman Lois, actually, there was one more thing I did want to mention. Um, I had this in my notes. Naomi premiered. Naomi, however you want to pronounce it. And I took, I watched it. I took a few notes just because it pertains to Superman. Because we were curious about this. So we'll kind of chat about this for a moment here. Uh, it... it it mentioned that she's a Superman fan. She runs the number three Superman site in the world. In her world, Superman's not real. Uh, but then all of a sudden, Superman flies over. And they see Superman, this light, and there's this light in the sky. Um, yeah, they're under. everybody's under the impression that it was some stunt performer. Some stunt performer. Yeah. And they Superman landed in Red River Forest. That later, she finds out there was something that happened there. Um, this is um, what do you call it? Uh, it does look we see from what we gather because really there is a cool scene where she like talks to people who got cell phone footage there, and her and her friend kind of edit all this different cell phone footage angles and stuff together to try to make one cohesive video of what happened. Mm-hmm. There's definitely no trunks on that Superman. No, sir. Um, they said that it's not supposed to be Tyler Hecklin's Superman. Um, that they're going to do their own thing. And I'm just kind of like, okay. And how I'm thinking it right now is Naomi is on a different Earth. On that Earth, Superman is fictitious. Something happened, a, a portal, a breach, crisis, because we don't know where it falls in the crisis timeline. And a Superman from a different Earth maybe fell through. Um, I think, you know, what I've said before, and a lot of people have said, make it Brandon Routh's Superman. Why not? Yeah. You know, if you're going to go this way, because technically his Superman's alive in the multiverse. I really don't want another Superman. I'd be completely yeah, honest with I, you. I, 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 we don't need another Superman. We don't need another Clark Kent Knight. I mean, at this point, we're looking at possibly uh, Calvin Ellis, J.J. Abrams, or, you know, it's maybe the the race swap Clark Kent from 60 years ago, I, I, you know? Yeah. But, um, and then the, the Val Zod um, show that's in pro, uh, pre-production over there at for HBO Max. Um, you, you left it open for Brandon. With the way you ended Crisis, if you didn't want to, you wouldn't have had that spot at the end of him flying. Um, you have Tyler doing his thing. You know, Cavill is, and the way that I say to people is, Cavill Superman until he isn't. Yeah. You know, um, so he's out there technically in the multiverse. I don't need another one to just muck it up even more because it's not really going to play a big role. So I think well, if they don't, they're not. I mean, if if that's the case, they're not really focusing on developing any of them at, in particular, you know? 
they're just trying to throw these multiverse worth Superman at you and see what, what they think, you know, sticks. So with that, just do Brandon. Because you already have a backstory with him. We already like him. We already bought into him. And it would just be easier. Um, the other thing is, I didn't really like the pilot at all. It felt very cheap. It felt very disjointed. It felt very, I don't know, like amateur fan made. Like if you're thinking like just the CW in general, this feels like a very low bar for the way they did this. Um, you know, I didn't like the characterization of just about anybody in it. Naomi seemed okay, but most of the other characters, I'm just like, you know, the, the Thanagarian guy who has like robot metal wings or something sounds like he's trying to be Morpheus with his, you didn't ask the right question. The bad guy that meets her in the forest seems very like first draft. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, her parents don't feel like real people. Like, it doesn't. I it think feels... I think that's for a reason, though. I think her parents don't feel like real people because of the mystery surrounding. Maybe I, you know, what I'm saying that maybe it just it just felt very like unrealistic. I, I mean, even it, it, for, se- it seems like the CW world show. Yeah, right? I mean, it seems like the way they've developed it, the world around her isn't that the world she's. She was raised to believe it. She's somebody different. She has these abilities that she didn't know she had. Um, I mean, just just some interesting things there. Um, I mean, she was the best part of of the episode. Um, yeah. The girl playing Naomi. Uh, absolutely, I, I I agree with that. From I stand by that that she yeah, yeah. was the best part of the. The episode, um, I agree with that. It, I mean, it was, it was. The pilot was all about creating an air of mystery around Naomi and stuff. I mean, like, like I said, I've never, I haven't read Bendis's Naomi book, and the only things that I've read of her was from, um, not even sure if she was in Young Justice, but I know she or. Uh, at any, in an issue for Young Justice. But I know she was in a few issues of Action Comics. And then I started the first arc of Justice League that she was involved in. And in that, they go back to her, her Earth. And they do say something. I believe the name was the same. The guy she met in the in the Yeah, place. it is. The ba- yeah, yes. that's the same guy supposed to be the guy who took over her planet or whatever. Yeah. So it was like on her planet in the comics at one point, um, they didn't supers like metahumans didn't exist. Superpowered beings didn't exist, and yep. then and then they do. Um, yeah, I mean that that is correct. So. It just, I don't, I mean, just looking at a show, it just felt very blah. Like, some of the stuff, like, they spent a lot of time, like, just like the way they filmed it, like, they spent a lot of time of just following her on her skateboard. Like, yeah. I mean, do kids still skateboard today? Like, I don't know why that's bugging me so bad, but I'm just like, they're making it like she's the only one that skateboards. It's all hip and cool. And I'm just kind of like, do kids still skateboard today? <laughs> they don't, I, feel I think like they that, do. I feel like that's only like in California where it's warm all the time. It's still a thing. But like out here in the Midwest, we're like, eh. <laughs> like you never well, see kids well, like skateboarding or like. Here in, T- here in Toledo, you can't skateboard on the sidewalks. and You can't skateboard in the street. I mean, cracks and uneven sidewalks and potholes in the street. I mean, it doesn't work. So Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um so I, I, I'm going to give it at least another two episodes, to be honest, and see if I'm in. But it just felt like a weird, like, beginning. I, like I told you, it was like, you know, she's supposed to be, well, like, really in. Like, the, the, the pilot opens and she's at a party. And the dude's like, why do you guys like Superman so much? Like, they come up to her and say that. And I'm just kind of like, 
it was just kind of weird how they tried to force that in. Um, it would have been, I think, much easier if, like, it started with Naomi, like, in her bedroom on her computer uploading stuff to her site and, like, chatting with fans. And, like, we're seeing her obsession and fandom there. And maybe she's wearing even a Superman shirt or something. And then she's like, does I have to go to school kind of thing? Like, would have been right. a little bit, would have been better than, like, being at this party where it's like, huh, you're a Superman fan. Why? He's not real. Like, it was just so exposition yeah. dump. Right. I mean, I have little investment in in the character in the show, so yeah, I'm gonna give it some more time. Um, uh, Jamie, she she really liked the first episode, so she has no involvement in it. You know, <laughs> besides through me, she has she has no investment in the in in the time or the the show as it is. But she enjoyed the first episode. Um, cool. I was gonna. I wanted to watch it with the with the kids, and I wanted to watch it with uh, uh, my, with Jania, but we, I just didn't get to. Um, I do want to chime in here. Uh, Mike, my my good friend Mike here, Mike Conley, um, he just messaged me back that the Batgirl suit looks fire. Um, so he's on board. It does. That other image you sent, the full image from with, head to toe with the gold boots, looks dope. Yeah, like it does. It. I mean, uh, I'm in. So they, I'm in. They've, they've nailed the costume. I'm, I'm down for what, they, what they're doing so far. Now we can move on to Superman and Lois. What Lies Beneath? Season 2, Episode 1. I do like in this episode, it immediately starts where the last episode was with Natalie walking up and then John, John Henry. That's what I'm going to call him. Okay. I'm going to say John Henry or Henry. So I don't get confused with John Kent. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. So follow me. (laughs) John Henry pulls her aside explaining like, that's not your mom. That's not your mom. And then it kind of cuts like a hard cut and says three months later. Love it. I love the, I love the time jump. You know, it's, it's past summer. It's fall again. Clark's Clark's in his uh, coaching outfit. Yep. You know? Kids are back at football practice. Um, I thought that, I thought that was smart building that time to kind of help with the change here. And um, well, it, it, <laughs> The the time jump gives a justification as to why Lois and Natalie are acting the way they are. Because right. it's been three months and neither one of them has dealt with the issue at hand that that Natalie sees her mom is not her mom. That what Lois even described last season about losing a daughter, losing a daughter named Nat, that she was going to name you know, I mean, it was going to be a completely different child because it's her and Clark's, but um, just it it it's very it still hits her very close to it still hits her straight in the heart. Um, so I mean, the three months of not of not addressing and and working through those issues gives you the reason why they are both acting the way they are in this episode because they are both they both have a hair trigger um reaction to everything uh, Lois snaps on John Lois snaps on Jordan she snaps on Clark yeah she does and and it and and it all you know it goes to that point of her and Natalie not working on their emotions. It's, it's a lot. It's got to be, you know, a crazy thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, and I guess we, we can kind of follow the Natalie thread because as it goes down, um, you know, we get a cut later of her and John Henry in Metropolis. 
and she's going to school. And I, I, I put my notes like, this doesn't make sense. Why would you do this? But she's going to the school that she went to on her earth. And he says, you know, this isn't your school. These aren't your friends. Remember that. Oh, no, that's just like setting her up for failure. And that's, that's even more making things difficult on her. And we see that um, later he comes to pick her up from school and it's now late in the evening. And she admits that she skipped first period and went for a walk that she names one of her friends didn't even notice her. And they get into a fight and she calls him Henry. For a genius level, for a genius level character, having a pretty hard time grasping the fact that she never actually met that person. Right. I mean, my thing is I, I don't blame her because it's, it's one of those things that is way out there and she hasn't had her come, uh, you know, come to terms moment yet of really being able to grasp everything. She hasn't really experienced it. I think the way uh, you know some people like her dad went through it, his process of of how he went through the whole process of trying to deal with stuff, and she even makes the comment about "I wish I had you know died," basically. Yeah, she wish she had died with the other, their Earth. And, you know, that, that's really hard on John. And then we'll skip ahead. Uh, just like I said, we're, we're following that thread that Lois does contact her and they have, she contacts John and then they have a moment where she talks with John and basically says, you know, I want to be your friend. Um, and... And they have a really great speech there where she, you know, explains that they should have talked. They should have worked a little bit and she just wants to be her friend. And they invite John, Henry and Natalie to come live on the farm while they look for a place in Smallville. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was really nice. I, I know I'm not your mom. I'm not trying, but I would like a friend that, you know, try to deal with, with these 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 confusing situations to get, you know. Yeah, I mean, um, how how would you deal with that? Like, there's no. Uh, yeah, there there there's no um, you know, welcome to your new Earth for dummies hmm. book to get you through it. There's there's no prep for, hey, there's multiple Earths and you might meet. Your, uh, you know, someone who looks like your mom or someone you know on another earth, but they're not that person. Getting to know your earth by the, <laughs> the monitor. <laughs> there you go. Welcome to your new earth. And this is how it's going to be. <laughs> right. So I Forget mean that, everything you know. Forget all your... They might All look your like friends it. never met you. <laughs> they might look like it, but that ain't them. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and of course, John Henry's story falls pretty much all of her beats. He really doesn't have anything on his own this episode. Um, so now let's go back and let's talk about the rest of the characters. Um, you, do you want to go by characters? Or you can go by story beats. Um, I mean, we, we kind of did Natalie there, um, and jump to, to Lois and that will kind of set us up on the boys and then in turn on Superman after that, I think. All right. Sounds good. So Lois. We know she's dealing with like the feelings and she brings up a point about even though she's not Natalie's mom, she had this full moment where she said she felt nothing. And, you know, at the end of the 
episode when she's breaking down to Clark. She felt nothing. And she then relates it to how her mom must have felt and been able to abandon her and Lucy. And this is the first time Lucy's mentioned. Now, remember in the season one, you and I had that discussion where they were talking about Sam as a father and family. And I was like, this would have been a perfect time to drop Lucy's name. But this is the first time she's mentioned. Yep. Yep. First time she's mentioned a series and uh you know that uh Jenna on is gonna return this season as C Lane. And just so just to throw this out there, like so um if you get a chance I sent this to you. Uh there's a podcast hosted by Seth Everett. It is called Hall of Justice. Um he just did an episode with Todd Helbring, the showrunner for this and I highly recommend go check it out um, because, you know, he talks about that. Yes, this is Lucy. It is the same actress playing Lucy Lane from Supergirl, but in the same way, it is a different Lucy Lane because this is post-crisis. You know, this is Lucy post-crisis. We have not had interaction. She hasn't been part of Supergirl since season one. So she is kind of a clean slate character. So there will be some differences to her characterization and performance, which makes complete sense. It does because, you know, I mean, as we, as we have been discussing since crisis happened, uh, they didn't use it enough to, to fix things or change things on um you know i mean everything basically came back as the same show as it was before and once in a while you got them like oh wait guys don't forget that crisis happened so you know throw in a throw in a crisis line let's change something just to make it you know make people remember that we had that yeah i mean What's interesting, um, in that interview, he talked about the original script for Superman and Lois, the original pilot they were working on, and they had, it was more of a crisis tie-in. Um, the reason why Clark was having discord with his children was because he went from having one infant son to all of a sudden having two teenage boys. And it was all going to stem from crisis, but... They said the more that they kept refining the script and then because of COVID and everything and how the shows, all the shows were progressing, they kind of just started to kind of do more of their own thing. Well, see, that's the thing there too. Like they're already screwing, they're, they're already screwing up their own story from, from the get go, you know, talking about him thrown in turmoil from having an infant child to have a teen son, like, he wasn't one of the Paragons. He wouldn't have even known the difference. Well, remember how the ones who weren't Paragons, they got the Martian Manhunter exposition dump on them? Yeah, and, and we talked about that, but he, he that would have been a revelation that he had he had dealt with this life before and he only had this young son. He would have already had an entire life that he lived with his children up to their teenage years. So the revelation would have been what was revealed to him, what his life was pre-crisis, not post-crisis. Post-crisis true. would be just the life he's been living. True, true. Like they're screwing up the, you know, the, the showrunners, things like that are screwing up their own story. Yep. I mean, I think it's good that they changed and came to what they they got because – People like us would have been like, well, you guys are just idiots because you're screwing up your own stuff. You wouldn't have even known. But, you know, I think they got to where they needed to be <laughs> for the show. Yes. Yes, sir. But it was just worth pointing out, you know. Um, so what were we talking about then? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lois. We, we were on Lois's story. 
Um, I know. I'm just being dumb. Uh, but with Lois, you know, she she's on a hair trigger at the very beginning. She gets on Clark about stuff. Um, and then he goes, she goes off to her and Chrissy are running the paper. And they're looking for more reporters to add. And basically, they can't find any. And Lois doesn't want any because she wants basically um, perfection out of a a reporter at this small paper. And she makes the comment, you know, um, that the guy that they were interviewing, he he was more worried about Twitter followers than he was about journalism. She... Um, there's a word she used that I'm drawing a blank now on about like persuasive or something journalism. And so we see that her and Chrissy are not at the, uh, the greatest stage in their work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, Lois goes home and catches John with his girlfriend. So let's let's pause there for a quick second because that was one of my favorite parts is when uh, and we'll come back to that. But she she basically uh, she catches John. We won't say more than that till we get to John's story. But I, my the line that I like is she's like whatever excuse you're coming up with in your mind, um, you know. And then her and Clark get into an argument when he gets back and. That pertains to John and the situation that John was in with his girlfriend. <clears throat> yeah. Which, and, the, with the. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say, I like the I like the line when they are actually coming at it. They're having this discussion. Um, you know, I think Clark, from a father's point of view, is not seeing it as such a bad thing, but also he doesn't quite understand because he wasn't the same type of teenager. Right. Um, and he says, I never would have done something like that at his age. And then she's like, well, I guess he's a lot more like his mother than his father. Yep. And I was so, in Jania. I, I flashed at Jania like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> right. I think that's something I have to worry about also. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, and and I also, I mean, me and Jamie actually had a discussion about that too. Um, you know, fifteen-year-old boy in his in his bedroom with the girl, and like, uh, and and that pertaining Clark, like, he wasn't the same. Um, you know, he he had powers ever since he was a child. He was very reserved, very hidden, very shy. Um, you know, he, he wasn't quite the same as, as John and John for all intents and purposes is a normal person right now has no, so his, his life, his worry would be, would I hurt somebody on accident? Right. And you know, the thing is, if you look at the setup, Clark comes back with them and then all of a sudden. He has a Superman emergency, and I love the scene because he's like talking in the background to him. Like, I gotta go check something, and in the foreground, John and his girlfriend are walking, and you just see Clark fly off. <laughs> um, so it was kind of like he hadn't planned on leaving them by themselves, you know. Um, it just kind of happened, and um, it was just it was very interesting. You know, that then John took advantage of the situation. Well, I think his girlfriend partly took advantage of that situation because she's like, how far away does, how long does it take to walk over to the other farm back? Did you catch whose farm it was? Uh, Hubbard? Yep, Hubbard. Hubbard. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping it's not still Ben Hubbard. Like maybe it's his son. But, you know, as referenced Ben Hubbard in Superman the movie, when Clark's leaving Martha, he talks to, he talked to Ben Hubbard before he goes off young Clark. I, I thought that was cool. Um, 
but yeah, we're, we're just going to keep with Jordan because I think we, we've kind of hit Lois's beats. Um, uh, Jordan, you and I both had the same question about Jordan at the same time. So football starting back up. Um, he's Jordan second. Or Jonathan. Str- Jordan. He's second string quarterback. That's Jonathan. That's what I'm. Dang it. <laughs> Okay, that's why I was just that's why I was clarifying. Well, it's the it, one it was. Well, the, the the dude's name is Jordan in real life. Okay, give me some credit. Like, it, oh, it, this is true. Yes, yes. So that, that's why I'm thinking Jordan because the actor, you know, Jordan, uh, it, and then the Jordan, it just gets really. So Jonathan, played by Jordan, the actor. <laughs> yes, you were totally uh, right. You had it right. <laughs> Jeez, Jonathan. But- John 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 Kent um, is quarterbacking second string, but he's not really getting to perform, and the coach is really hard on him. And he ha- they mentioned, you know, you had your arm broken twice last year. We see him with his girlfriend, and you and I are both like, who is this? Her name is Candace. This is not the girl that we left off with. That was Tegan. Because I had, I looked it up. Like the character that John was courting, talking with, kissing, making out with, who was had the father from Central City, was Tegan. Uh, the character was Tegan Wickham, and now he has a girlfriend named Candace. So over summer, he found him a new woman. I guess so. Because our first thought, we were both like, "Wait, was she recast?" Is this a new character? And then, no, it's it's a new character. So what's going on with John? He uh, playing some field, you know? Um, is that going to be his thing now? Like the ladies' man? <laughs> Hello, I'm John Kent, the ladies' man. But what we discover is he's in his bedroom with his girlfriend, and he has his shirt off. I'm going to just say this, that uh, you got it the wrong way, John, but we'll move on. And his uh, his mom came in and caught him. And when the scene well, happened... I suppose. Have you watched some of the other CW shows, okay, man? Uh, <laughs> they are thirsty as thirst. They're like a person in the desert. That's how thirsty they are. Right. <laughs> uh you know, his mom's like, whatever, you know, lame brain excuse you're coming up with. And I, I looked at Janina like, i just been like, I'm a dude. I, 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 I'm a dude with my girlfriend. I'm, I'm 15, teenager. What, what do you think I'm thinking about 24-7? Okay. I saw an opportunity. I seized the point. I seized the day. Carpe diem. Right. <laughs> I was just going to say carpe diem. <laughs> I mean, there's not really an excuse. It's just like, Oops. I'm just uh, sorry you caught. And there's another scene with Jonathan, but we'll come back to that because we need to get in touch with the other brother, Jordan, the correct Jordan. <laughs> yes, Jordan Kent. So the episode, when it opened up, was hilarious that Jonathan comes downstairs and Clark's like, oh, what's that smell? What? 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 And then Jordan enters wearing... Too much cologne. <laughs> and, of course, Clark, with his super smelling, uh, was like, whew, buddy, when is down? <laughs> um, and he has something special planned for Sarah, who's coming back from camp. And... As a counselor? She's been away all summer. I guess all summer. That's the way they made it. Uh, scene uh, that she's been away and this is like I, I I call it it dude I like he's getting his heart broken that's all I'm going to say he's screwed yeah she she does not seem she seems very much very much apprehensive about the relationship since she's come back I, I mean, I, I'm not, they, they haven't revealed why, um, 
could be a couple of reasons. And I mean, hopefully it's not some of the ones that are going to like hurt him a whole gonna, lot. She's going to break his heart. Okay. She's going to break I mean, his heart. Any, anything she does at this point, like negatively towards the relationship, it's hard. It's just how, it's just how far is she going to stab the knife and twist? I mean, she's going to turn it hard because let's, let's look at it this way. Okay. Um, she's had relationship experience. She's uh, a little bit more seasoned. This is his first crush, first love. And, you know, he's, he's thinking probably long-term he's invested and we get the feeling, uh, even when Sarah later talks to Kyle, because, you know, when Jordan shows up, she says, you know, Jordan, I didn't even, why is he here? I haven't even texted him to come over. So it was already kind of setting him up. And then she didn't want to go on their special date. Well, I mean, time he shows up, he didn't even give her a chance to change. You know, she's wearing her camp shirt day the whole time. It seems like she's she's pretty busy from the time she arrived home. So, I mean, it, it's kind of understandable to want a little time to relax when you get back. But I I, I understand her point and his point. Yeah, I, I, I've been. There. I mean, yeah, I, you want to you want to see her. You want to want to get by and see her. She just got back. See how long. I I've been Jordan like that before, where you're just. You care, and you can't help that you care. And she's pulling away, and you know he'll he'll probably turn evil and slaughter half the town later this season. So he'll just you know go crazy. Well, they all get what they. Yeah, <laughs> it'll turn kidding. into the the bright burn sequel that we all been wanting. Um, we we do see that Jordan has learned how to use his heat vision and control it as he uses his heat vision to light a bunch of candles to be trying to be sweet and romantic. Um, Which is a very nice scene. It is, you know, and then he, she wants to go. She says she don't feel good and wants to leave. And when Jordan gets back home, his mom's like, you know, how'd it go? He said, good. And she's like, that's all I get. Good. And he's like, I took her to, and I can't remember the place. She's like, where you got arrested? He's like, I checked with the owners first. They were fine with it. So he's already being, you know, smart. And it was trying to be romantic. And, um, you know, it was just funny because Lois is like, that's all I get is good. And he's like, um, yeah. And then, well, after, the, after what happened, your father's going to have a talk with you too. And um, I love the talk. <laughs> talk. When, when Clark shows up and he's talking to him about wanting to be intimate with someone. And, you know, he's like, you guys can ask me anything. And they were asking like, about his first time. And he was like a little older. And then did you catch Jonathan? Mouth. mouth bomb. He yeah. Mouth, I, Janita didn't catch it at first and I was <laughs> cracking up. And she's like, what? I was like, Jonathan just mouth mom. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Like he's not, he's not doing anything. Like <laughs> he's never been with before her. <laughs> anybody before Lois. Which is, uh, is possible, but not always true. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we're not sure about this because, you know, in most Superman lore, like Lana Lang was the first person Clark ever told. Um, so, um, so we'll have to wait and see, you know. Uh, and we we do get a, you know. So, um, 
what do you call it? We so Sarah, you know, and Kyle have a have that moment. We we talked about like in the garage where, you know, he he tell he Kyle tells Sarah she's basically the alpha in the relationship. And we're kind of feeling that she's pulling away from Jordan. So we're gonna see how that plays out. And the Cushings are having their own problems because I don't know if you noticed this. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. I'm a, as a parent, I noticed they're missing a child. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, they are. Um, yeah, Sophie is nowhere to be seen. I was like, I put that up. I was like, Uh, yeah, she spent a she spent a lot of time with other members of the family last season. Maybe she that again. she just went to live with her grandma. That she always get rid off written off the show, written off the show. Jesus, Tyler. Um, it was funny though because I'm like, where's the other child? Um, and we see that Kyle's kind of like he tried to give Clark advice, which I pretty much think was kind of crap advice, but because. Lana and him, he's having issues in, in a, his own kind of insecurity because he calls Jordan out that Jordan's insecure um, because Lana's spending a lot of time with the guy she's campaign managing for mayor. And I told Jania, it's like, uh, Lana should be the one running for mayor. Not, yes. not this guy. Absolutely. I, I say the same thing. Um, she's the one who, who she's the one who speaks up for him, anyways. Right. Um, yeah, Lana should definitely be the one running for mayor. Um, yeah, and uh, the Kyle's advice to Sarah in the garage um, it was very nice, Father. It was. It, it was like his advice to her was good. His advice yeah. to Clark, not so good. <laughs> and then and there's a great scene. Well, I think it. fatherly advice is a little more important. I, I agree. <laughs> um, there's a nice little scene between Kyle and Lana where they're kind of talking and she's saying that she'd rather be there with him. They start kissing and then Sarah walks in like, you guys have a bedroom down the hall with a door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's when I was chuckling in the nest. I was like, where's your other kid? So, all right. So that takes care of everybody except Clark. So now back it up. So the opening scene, we get a really cool shot of a bunch of merchandise being sold uh, for Superman. And I pointed out there's some figures there that I need. Okay. Um, very Tyler looking figures. Maybe that's a tease for some McFarland stuff that's coming along the way. Um, That'd be sweet. And also, I don't know if you caught this, but of course I did because I'm a weirdo. But they're selling Superman capes. And one of the capes they had for sale hanging in the back had the yellow S on the back. Oh, no, I didn't see that. It's hanging up in like just if you get a chance to watch that scene again, you'll it's hanging up. Um, if I figure if I find it out, I mean my, my Superman cape for my Superman t shirt that has the Velcro cape on it has the yellow Superman See? on the back. Uh, you know, and I'm gonna say this because you and I have said this before. I I want them to uh, backdoor Krypton in as like a prequel to this show somehow. And I posted that that in in my head canon right now Segel is Clark's uh grandfather and uh I had a person online say no you got the wrong cape and I'm like really dude really that's what you're going to say <laughs> like something that could probably be changed so yeah anyway, that could easily be changed but so we see that they're selling merchandise and Kyle makes a reference about him not wanting small to become some sort of tourist like destination because of what um, 
and I'm just like, okay, you know, I get that. But Clark, what do we say? He's coaching again. Um, and we see him fly off to go and help. And what he hears is a Russian submarine. Or not Russian, North Korean. Sorry. And they're, and as he's flying, something happens where he gets in distress and something is hurting him and he falls. And, but he does, um, what do you call it? Raise the submarine. And it's a great scene where the people on the submarine are cheering you know, stating Superman saved us. And I like that scene. What'd you think? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the effects budget is certainly, the production budget is still really good. Um, and the, the way the suit looks on him when he's all wet, though, it's a little kind of, like, folded up in places. Yeah. Um, but uh, they they were doing some pretty cool stuff in that scene. Um, the, the submarine falling deeper and deeper, getting crushed from the pressure, um, him rescuing them and lifting them out of the water. Um, I'm just very, I'm very curious as to what, what he's got going on. We're going to speculate with, we're going to speculate with that here soon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was my biggest takeaway from that. You know, he saved the day. He did save the day and well, he, so he meets, um, well, we meet, he already met, um, Anderson who's taken over at the DOD who basically is upset that Superman saved a North Korean sub and didn't place it on American soil. And basically Anderson is upset because Superman should think of America's interests first. And Superman's like, no, I already pledged myself to the world. I'm not just, he's going to help the DOD, but he's like, I'm not here. Um, to serve them. You know, he's like, I'm here to, I save lives. And that's a big deal. You know, like for, we are in a time more and more where Superman's supposed to represent a, a savior to the world and not just to one particular group. But that's not how Anderson looks at things. And then skipping ahead with Anderson here, we learned that, there was a school of metahumans that were being trained that wear uniforms with the shield um, that he knew nothing about. So that was something that Sam, I guess, kept from him. That's going to come back up here soon. I don't know if, if, um, well, I mean, I, I, abs- I'm absolutely sure that school um, of tra- uh, for training metahumans, um, I'm absolutely sure that Sam about that. But oh, Sam, I mean, Clark send, didn't know about it. Sam yeah. never told Clark about it, right? But I don't. I'm not sure that he's the one who sent would sent them out with with shield on. That's An- I, I think that's Anderson. <clears throat> yeah, um, I, I did like that. He said that's not your sh- that's not your shield to give away. Yeah. And he's just like, it's the most recognizable symbol in the world. Like, so what? Like, can't can't take that, put it on, plaster it on whoever you want. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's mine. That's my, like, I wish he would have fought a little bit harder. Like, that's mine. My family symbol. That's, um, that's what I stand for. And you can't just let anyone wear it because you're basically drowning my name in the mud. So I would have, I would have liked a little bit more argument there, but you know, Clark kind of brushes off and heads back home. And that's where we get, you know, the Anderson stuff. That's all we got here. Um, 
So the other big Superman y thingy is in this episode, earthquakes start happening under the mine and start shaking Smallville apart. And we see Superman, Clark, fly around, uses his freeze breath at the water tower. And. Which was a pretty awesome, uh, pretty awesome way to save the day. Um, Fro- yes. Froze all the water so that way it just stands there. Until the water melts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, w- it was awesome. And. There, so there's there's little earthquakes going on. There's some rumbling going on. And, the, of course, you know, Clark flies into the mine because he sees people. That's where we see the metahumans with the shields. And I guess the big thing is here, something's underground, under the mind. Because um, the final, you know, shot is the big one that everyone's the big talking point is like a hand in a green suit punching and then it cuts. So are you thinking what I'm thinking? Okay. Was it a green suit? I knew it was like some sort of mech suit. And I mean, the, the, the idea condiment King. Yeah, of course it's gotta be condiment King. I mean, the only two things, (laughs) right. The only two things that it could possibly be, I mean, it looked like a mech suit, so I mean, green mech suit that's Lex Luthor. Um, but uh, a green ha- uh, a, a hand in green punching through the punching through the ground. I mean, that's that sounds like Doomsday. Yes, but it yeah. also did look very mech like. So uh, everybody's going to Doomsday. Um. The villain is supposed to be the. There's supposed to be multiple villains this season, but I guess the big one's supposed to be known to us by episode three. And episode four is supposed to have Lo, Lucy Lane. Um, and the thing is, with this, if okay, so if it is Doomsday, okay, we know. This Superman fought Doomsday pre-crisis. So here we are, post-crisis. Um, you know, and what does that mean? You know, um, you know, I think the one thing I told you is like, okay, if they're into Doomsday, I think it would have been neat if it was something that maybe he's not under the Schuster mines. Um, like if he was somewhere else and he was coming out and then you could have done this whole storyline where he's kind of coming out and kind of like, you know, in the comics when he first shows up and like, he's just crossing the country, killing people. Right. And you're kind of like, he's in the background until like the last episode or two. And then, Um, like you can battle with Doomsday or whatever at the end. I think that, that could have been interesting. Um, but the fact he's like, whatever this is right under the Schuster mines, uh, is interesting. Um, it could be Doomsday. It couldn't be. This could just be one of those kind of red herring things. Um, if it is Doomsday, it could be really interesting to have Clark battle Doomsday in this season and then, if he does, and then do a death of Superman type thing th- through the the third season, or like a kind of a world without Superman and whatever, and then you could do Cyborg Superman, or you know we have Steel and stuff. So I, I don't know. Do we want to go that route? I'm not even going to really speculate on it too much, because um, we're, we're not sure. But if it is Doomsday. Interesting, you know that that's where we wanted to go with the Superman already. Um, it would, I think, it'd be a this would be a more interesting way to tell that story, um, especially if you build it up, kind of like the comics did, where 
you know, if we're going, we're going 15 episodes this season where the last maybe three episodes is the battle, you know, the way the comics kind of built down to the last issue. Um, yeah. Um, the, the only thing that, the only thing that doesn't work, I mean, in my opinion, the only thing that doesn't work for TV, um, is, is a character like Doomsday. Um, I mean, he's, he's, he's full on rampage. Um, you know, he, he doesn't stop. He kills everybody in his path. Um, I mean, the way they did it in Smallville is the only, like, is the only way that it worked that, that Doomsday is like dormant. The whole, you know what I mean? More, more time than he's than he's actually out there doing what he's doing. Um, you know that's that's just that's just kind of the way of it. I just don't think that that character in in any other way would really work. Like you certainly can't introduce that character now and then not battle him until the twelfth, thirteenth, or thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth episode. Right, especially if he's right under the mine. So he's going to pop up in Smallville. You know, there's... It's not like he's going to pop up in Montana. <laughs> right. Um, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I'm intrigued enough to see what they're going to do. But at the same time, I mean, it could be a red herring, you know? And that's why like, I'm not going to speculate too hard on it. Because, you know, everyone thought that we had Captain Luthor, Lex Luthor, and it was John Henry Irons. We really didn't see it. Um, but I don't know. Like we talked about before, how many times is the only Superman story that makes a sense, the death. But I think if you did death of Superman in this show, it would be much more powerful. It would be a stronger story. Um, but it's just kind of one of those one of stories we kind of want to move away from. Um, cause in this story you have his children, his wife, friends, um, that would feel it. And I mean, there's, there's ways to do it and, you know, definitely ways to do it and keep your cast. Okay. Well, so I actually just came across an article published two days ago and it is saying that Doomsday that Superman and Lois feel Doomsday in season two episode all I know is Todd Helping said that the it'll be the villain will be appear in episode three there's gonna be multiple villains this season um and I think a lot of the other articles are just speculating because he it's I've never heard it from a reliable source that it is doomsday for sure. I mean it could be, but all I'm saying is I'm just there's a lot of people who just are running with doomsday because of the the punch. Yeah. Um I mean this is a yeah. I mean this is a screen rant article. So, but we will see. Um, but la so with Doomsday, remember William Day just died. It says it says that tease is says that tease is our homage to a classic Doomsday cover. Then in episode two, you're going to see him a little bit more in episode three. Still. Um, I mean William Day just died. And well, they, there's our resurrected Doomsday. And if they want to come <laughs> back to Krypton like we want so bad, there's Doomsday. Okay, He's actually burrowing from his grave in National City. Makes sense to me. Yep. <laughs> but I think we got it all. Um, great start to the season two. It feels like the show didn't miss a beat. Um, yeah. Anything you want to throw in there and add? Chimp? Um, no, no, I, I think we covered it pretty well. Um, yeah, real excited. It's back. Glad to see 
um, Superman Lois. The the quality is still there. Uh, show looks the same. Um, you know, we we had a little bit, had a decent amount of stuff going on. Um, the thing I'm curious about is the is the the other metahumans. I mean, yeah, they're wearing Superman shield. Um, but what are their abilities? What do they do? Some of them seem, uh, they, they seem super powerful, super strong, and then definitely super fast. He went out to look for them and they had dropped off a miner and then they were gone. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they talked about that. They want to really dig deep into the comics and, not retread, not retread a lot of things that are already done on Supergirl, but if anything does cross, they want to do it differently. So I feel like we're we're in for some good Superman storytelling. Um, but like I said, I recommend everyone check out that interview. You know, that's that's the voice of the the person who's leading the ship of this story. So thank you for listening. This is Tyler from the Krypton Report with Chimp Arm, the other Krypton Report, the Superman of Red. Chimp Arm Red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, James is the best, but <laughs> remember. Look up in the sky. Do you like movies? Of course you do. Do you like comic book movies? Of course you do. Well, our Patreon is launched now. It's a dollar a month. That's all we ask. One dollar a month to hear great content. And right now, one of the biggest things we're doing on our Patreon is movie commentaries. I am a movie person, and I love to talk about movie. So what we're doing is at least two movie commentaries a month. You'll hear the wonderful voice of my wife, Jania, more often. And other special shows. Check out our Patreon at CryptonReport.com slash Patreon. And all we ask is, hey, $1. It helps us keep the show on. We're not looking to get rich. We just help with the cost of doing this, and it helps a friend out. You loan a friend a dollar, you probably have a dollar lying around the house and change. So check out Patreon.com slash CryptonReport. Sign up for the $1 a month and send us a message. You can be on the podcast. We can talk about something, anything you want to talk about. You can join us for a movie commentary. If you want, so check it out. And if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. If you're enjoying this podcast, here's some of our favorite podcasts to check out. Digging for Kryptonite, The Aspiring Kryptonian, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Geek of Steel, The All-Star Super Fan Podcast, It All Comes Back to Superman, and Superboy Legacy, Supergirl Radio, and of course, Always Hold On to Smallville. Check all those out, enjoy those supercasts, and remember, keep listening. Krypton Report is a Tears production. We thank you for listening and enjoying, and please support us on our Patreon account, our T Public store, and check out our social media. Always remember to look up in the sky.